What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, I found an HTML template that I like the design of, and I'm gonna be building it out from start to finish inside of Squarespace. So I was looking for web design inspiration the other day, and I came across this site, and I thought it was a pretty cool design, and I wanted to go over how I would go about building this out in Squarespace and some things are gonna be very easy and some things are gonna be a little bit more difficult. So you'll learn some of the challenges that we face when using Squarespace to design a site. And then we, you'll also learn some workarounds that we can use to achieve some of the design elements even though they're not so easy to reproduce on Squarespace. So this is the design we'll be looking at. So we have some icons here, we have some imagery with the shapes in the background. Um, we have more shapes behind images. Uh, and then this grid style layout, which we'll need to use CSS grid to recreate. Not too complex, but it comes together really nicely. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the way I start every new site is from a style guide. That just helps me set up all of the styles in the beginning to match the mockup that I'm gonna be working off of. So it's a little bit of a head start every time I wanna start a new site. So I just keep a style guide in my Squarespace dashboard, and then every time I wanna start a new site, I can just duplicate this site, and I'll just start right from my style guide. So I'll go ahead and duplicate that. You can pick up this style guide in my shop. It's only $10, and it just makes it a little bit easier to start new sites. Okay, so just a quick intro to the style guide. Um, I'm not gonna go over it in a lot of detail. I actually have a video on it, so you can check out the card at the top of the video right now if you wanna learn more about starting from a site from the style guide. But basically it just has all of my different typography sizes and styles and buttons in all of the different color themes in Squarespace. So I can just have everything on one page and as I'm setting up my styles, I can see how all of my you know, fonts and colors are gonna look on all the different color themes. So that's why I like to start from the style guide. So now that we have our style guide built out in Squarespace, it's time to look at our design and figure out what color sections we need to plan for. So that's the first step that I always take when looking at a mockup. So looking at this mockup, we have a section that has black heading text, black body text, and a black button with a white background, and that's gonna be kind of our default style. We then have a black section with red heading text and a red button. Then we need another color theme that has also a black background, but this time white heading text with a red button. Then we're gonna need another white section, but this time it has red heading text instead of black heading text. Then we'll need another white section which has black heading text, but this time has a red button instead of our first section that had a black button. And then we'll need a section that has a red background and white heading text. So we're gonna need to build out six different color themes for this design. So now that we know the color themes that we need to set up, the first thing we have to do inside of Squarespace is set up our color palette. So when I have a mockup to work off of and I don't know the colors ahead of time, like I haven't worked with the client to set up a style guide, what I'll do is I'll open up the design in Photoshop and then I'll click on whatever color I wanna isolate and then I'll copy the hex code from Photoshop and I'll paste it into Squarespace. And so it's just a process of hopping back and forth between the Squarespace color palette, the design, and Photoshop, and inserting all of the different hex colors that I pull from the Photoshop design. Now that the color palette is set up, I can go through and start setting up each color theme that I planned out earlier. So it's just a matter of, again, bouncing back and forth between the design to remember what colors headings and background colors and what color buttons buttons need to be for each of the different color sections that we planned out. But I'll just go through the style guide, and since I have each section on one page, it makes it very easy to just update all of the settings in accordance with the design. So now we have our color set up. The next thing that we can do is we can work on our typography. So we have this really big uh, sans serif font here, so I'll work on that one for the titles first. Uh, so I'm just gonna go to my site styles and then my fonts panel. And for my font, I'm just gonna go with Proxima Nova because it's close enough, it's a sans serif font, but you would have worked with the client and you would know the exact font that you would wanna use. 
So that's the last step in the setup process. Now that we have everything completed and, and set up in terms of the design, we can go ahead and start building out the pages on our site. So I'm gonna add a new blank page and name it home. And then I'm gonna start adding my text and images in each section on the page. So notice I'm just using the section alignment tools. And since I already set up all of the font sizes and styles, it makes it very easy to build out the site. Now this is a cool workaround when you want to have kind of a custom shape behind an image. It's easiest just to make that shape part of the image and you can save out the image as a PNG. So then you get that shape behind the image very easily. Now I like to give my icons from Icon Monster and in the design we have some icons that I need to place next to the text. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and I'm just going to hop over to Icon Monster and we'll look for a location pin um, and it looks like we have one that's pretty dang close uh, and the nice thing about icon monster is you can just copy this code here and place it right in a code block and you don't have to provide any attribution which is really nice um, so that's a great resource for free icons that you can use in your projects So I'm just going to repeat this process for each of the icons, going back to Icon Monster, copying the SVG code and pasting it in the code block. And I'm just going to let the music roll for a while and then I'll chime in again when I feel like there's something that's worth mentioning. In this section, the design calls for five images in a row. And so originally I had dragged out five image blocks, but then I ran into the problem of you can't evenly space five image blocks next to each other. So to get around that, I used a plugin that brought back gallery blocks to Squarespace 7.1. And so then I could just place five images next to each other in the gallery block. But there's rumors that Squarespace will be bringing back the gallery block. So you might not even have to use a plugin in the future. By the time you're watching this, they might have brought back gallery blocks already. And so that is the best way to get five images in a row. For the gallery section, the way that I set it up is I created a section for each of the gallery sections and I added the images if it needed a background image and then I just gave it the appropriate background color and then I could just drag my content into that section. And then I wrote CSS using CSS Grid to place the sections in the appropriate order to make sure that they appeared correctly in the grid. So it's a pretty advanced solution to get that CSS Grid. Um, and it's not something that I've taught yet in any of my courses. I do have a Flexbox course, which is linked down in the description below. You can check out the free training on that. But uh, I haven't added yet CSS Grid to it, although it is something that I'm thinking about, which would allow you to create uh, exactly what I'm doing here. So it is a complex workaround, but it's nice because if I was to hand this off to a client, they would still be able to drag and drop blocks right into those content sections in that gallery.
for my build process throughout this video, you might have noticed that I kind of work like a painting with broad strokes first and then I start to get more specific as I go. So here I'm just doing kind of the final tweaks of the design. So in the very beginning, it's the broadest strokes. So I'm setting up the design um, and all the styles and everything. And then I go into building the site out. Then I go into writing my CSS. And then at the end here, you can see I'm doing just the final little tweaks to try and get the site uh, as close to the design mockup as possible. And there we have it, the finished design built out in Squarespace. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I think with, you know, a little more tweaking, you could get even closer to the mockup. But as it stands, it's a really nice design. And all of this would be very editable by the client because it's built on Squarespace and it's all drag and drop in terms of updating the content. Looks really good on the tablet view as well. And on the mobile view, everything stacks really nicely. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm thinking about creating another video about little tweaks I would make to the mobile view to make it even better. But considering we didn't do any mobile specific changes here, I think it all looks really nice on the mobile view as well. All right, I hope you found this video enjoyable and learned something from seeing my process from start to finish, even though it was pretty sped up. If you like this type of video, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do some more full mock-up build-outs in Squarespace. All right guys, that's it for me. I'll see you in the next one.